In this video, I'm gonna show you things that you can do today to increase your chances of qualifying for the StarkNet airdrop. Now, before you start this process, you're going to need to have a Web3 wallet that's compatible with StarkNet. So since I'm on a web browser, I'm using Argent X, but if you're on a mobile phone, you could just use the basic Argent wallet. So you need to have a StarkNet wallet, you need to fund it with some Ethereum, and then you'll be ready to go. I have a previous video showing how you can set up your StarkNet wallet and also how you can register a .stark domain name, which is a useful starting point. But once you've watched that and you set up your wallet, come back and we'll continue with this. So right now I am on starknet.quest and this shows you a series of different on-chain activities that you can do to earn NFTs and to increase your chances of qualifying for an airdrop, but also increase the amount of a potential airdrop because you'll be completing these transactions on the blockchain establishing your wallet's history of interacting with the chain and increasing the total volume and value of the transactions that you've done. And there's a number of quests right now to earn these NFTs, which will definitely help you in your airdrop pursuits. So let's start here with the high Starks quest line. Here there are four different quests to complete. Now I've already done one of them because in a previous video I registered a dot Stark domain name so I've already collected this one but we're gonna go through these three here and then a couple of the other ones as well so that by the end of this video you'll be able to do the same. So for starters let's do the element gemstone quest and this is where we're going to have to buy an NFT and list one NFT on the element NFT platform. But for starters, we have to take a little quiz with a couple of questions in it. So what is Element? It's a community-driven marketplace for NFTs. Which chain does Element not currently support? Solana. And what is the right answer in the context of Element? You save fees on trading NFTs, gas fees savings. All right, we've passed the quiz, so now we can actually move on to the next step, which is to buy and list an NFT on Element. Now, we don't really care what the NFT is, and so since we're just trying to complete this quest, let's go ahead and find the cheapest NFT that we possibly can just to complete this. So if we sort these by price, low to high, just hit on the Explore tab, and then sort them price low to high. We'll find a bunch of cheap NFTs. And I found this NFT here called Crypto Eater, which is a funky looking skull chomping down on the Ethereum logo. So let's go ahead and hit buy now. We are going to have to confirm this transaction and we have to confirm that we understand that this may not be an authentic NFT because it's not a verified collection, but that's okay, it's just a couple of cents. So let's go ahead and confirm this transaction in the Argent X wallet. We're gonna to have to pay a small amount in gas fees. Luckily right now, gas isn't too high, so we'll confirm the transaction here. All right, congratulations. I am now the proud owner of Crypto Eater 1519. And if I go to my profile, I can see my NFTs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and list this same NFT for sale. So to do that, you can click on it, hit list, and then we're gonna choose how much to list it for. So let's say one ETH, and I can select the duration of the listing. So let's say three months, and then I would just hit listing. And then I have to complete two transactions in my wallet. One to approve access to this NFT, and the second one to actually put the listing and make it live. So here is the second transaction that I'm signing, and it is now live. So if I hit view listings, it will bring me back to my homepage and show me the NFTs listed. So in this case, Crypto Eater 1519. All right, now that that's done, we can go back to the StarkNet quest and hit verify. And it recognizes automatically from the blockchain data that we've completed these two things. And then the next step is to follow Element on Twitter. But you don't actually have to do it. You just have to hit the follow button and then wait for a couple of seconds. So let's go ahead and collect our reward. And this is gonna mint another NFT to our collection. Each time we're doing this, have to pay a few cents in transaction fees. So if you're trying to walk through this exact same series of steps, recommend doing it when base fees for the network are a little bit lower, like 24 is okay, but just a month ago it was at four or five. So that would have been ideal. Maybe we'll go back down. And if you go to this button here, my land, it tracks all of the NFTs and achievements that you've collected and puts them out right here where you can look at them. So as you go through these quests, and you complete them, then your land will get larger. So let's go ahead and 
move on to the next one, which is the Brick Gemstone Quest. Again, we have to go through a simple quiz, so let's go ahead and do that. What are bricks? They are ERC-1155 compatible construction blocks. That's the correct answer. Then the next one is what are sets? It's ERC-721 collectibles made up with bricks. And then what is Brick Factory? It's a contract issuing bricks on the primary market. Finally, when was the brick deployed? December 2021. Those are all the correct answers. And once you finish the quiz, you can move to the actual meat of this quest, which is to own a brick NFT or construct your own brick NFT. So if you hit on the build now button, it's gonna open up the application. Now there's two ways that you can complete this quest. The first is that you can make a set of bricks by yourself and then mint it by hitting on the mint button. But each brick costs something like $2. So the more bricks that you include in a set, the more expensive it's going to be. Or you can go back to the element exchange for NFTs and you can buy a brick set for very, very cheap. So those are the two ways that you can do it. Now, if you wanna buy a brick set from element, you just go to the brick sets collection and then you could just purchase a single brick for a couple of cents at this point. Or you could just mint a brick set with one brick in it. Although if you're gonna to try to go the minting route, you have to buy at least 10 bricks, which is gonna cost you $3.68. So that is a little annoying. So actually the, the absolute cheapest way to do this is definitely just to buy a single brick from Element. Okay, I finally found a brick that's actually available to purchase. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm this transaction. And it's gonna cost me a little less than it would to mint a selection of bricks. So that's better. Okay, that transaction was completed. So I have a brick set in my wallet. Now, if I go back to the Starknet quest, I can verify that. And then again, follow them on Twitter, although you don't actually have to do it. You just have to click the button and wait a few seconds, and then we'll be able to collect this reward. All right, minting the NFT for this one now, and we'll move on to the next. The final quest in the High Starks quest line is the layer swap quest. And this is where we have to bridge funds to Starknet using layer swap. So let's go ahead and verify this. Now I've actually already done this, but if I open up this, this brings you to the layer swap application where you choose which network you're going to be bridging from. So you can bridge from any of the different layer twos and then make sure that you select Starknet as your destination, choose how much ETH you want to send, and then confirm the transaction. And you have to make sure also that your Starknet address is put into the layer swap Starknet address field because it's not the same address as it is for all of the other layer two networks on Ethereum. It's a separate wallet address. But once you have completed one bridge transaction using layer swap, you can verify that here, and then you'll be able to collect your Quest NFT reward after you click these buttons saying that you followed them on X and retweet the thread. So let's collect this NFT reward right now. So that is the end of the basic High Starks quest line. Now there's a bunch of other quests on here as well that we can complete. For example, there's three onboarding quests, one NFT quest, a StarkNet Pro score quest and a DeFi quest. So I'm gonna keep walking you through how to do these. This video might be a little bit on the longer side, but if you follow along these exact same steps, then by the end of this, you'll be in a pretty good position to qualify for the StarkNet airdrop, as long as you complete all of these quests. So let's do the DeFi quest next. Now this quest is with the Ekubo DeFi application and we're gonna to have to provide liquidity. But before we can do that, we have to pass another simple quiz. So let's go ahead and do that. Where is Ekubo building its platform? Obviously on StarkNet. What are the key features of the protocol? Concentrated liquidity, a singleton architecture and extensions is the answer to number two. And the answer to the third one is that it offers better pricing. Once you finish the quiz, you'll be able to open up the Ekubo app and provide liquidity. Now you can just provide liquidity and withdraw it immediately after you collect your NFT. You don't actually have to leave it on the platform and there's no minimum amount either, which is nice. So to do this, you have to decide which pair or pool you want to deposit liquidity to. And you need to have both of the assets in the pool in order to provide liquidity. So I'm going to do the ETH USDC pool because I'm pretty sure, oh no, never mind. I have USDT. So I need to find the 
ETH USDT pool. Here it is right here. So if I click on this, I will be able to deposit liquidity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and deposit it into the pool with the most volume in terms of parameters. Hit on the plus button here. You have to select your fee tier. I'm just gonna go with the default one and the price range again, since I'm gonna withdraw this almost immediately, it doesn't really matter. And then you'll get to this point where you can decide how much you want to deposit. So I'm just gonna put 0.001 and then it tells you the equivalent amount in the value of USDT that you have to provide. And then hit on this button here that says add liquidity and confirm the transaction in your wallet. It's gonna mint an NFT for you that signifies your liquidity position but you're gonna re-exchange that and swap it back for the assets in a second. And after a couple of seconds, it will show up in your positions section of the application. So now I can go back to the Starknet quest, verify this, then you just have to join the Discord and you can collect your NFT for this quest. So let's confirm that. All right, another one down. Next, let's do this NFT quest. Focus tree attentiveness. Now this one's actually a really easy one because you just have to do a quick quiz and then follow them on Twitter again. So let's start the quiz. Nine hours, 47%, increase focus. Then just hit on the buttons for follow on Twitter and retweet their thread. Wait for a second and this NFT quest is complete minting yet another NFT. And this is one of the nice things about this is that not only are you actually making transactions on the StarkNet blockchain, but you're also minting all of these NFTs, which are additional transactions. So you can see of all the NFTs, we've already got six or seven transactions just from minting these NFT rewards, not to mention all of the different transactions that we're completing to get the NFTs. So by the end of this, you'll have completed probably somewhere in the realm of 30 to 50 different transactions. And obviously you can keep increasing your volume and the value of your transactions as well. Finally, let's take a look at these three onboarding quests. These are the last three that I'm gonna show you in this video. This one, the StarkNet profile, I've actually already set up and completed in a previous video, so I should be able to automatically qualify for this NFT. But again, we have to pass a quick quiz. So what is the primary purpose of the StarkNet ID? It's an identity and naming protocol for StarkNet. What extension do the domain names use? .stark. And what is the purpose of the proof of personhood verification? It's to verify that a user is a real human and a single person. Then if you haven't registered a Stark domain name, you're gonna to need to open up the app. But since I've already registered CryptoCove.Stark, that step is completed. Now for this one, it's actually a little bit more complicated because now I have to verify my Twitter and Discord handles on the StarkNet application. So I select my CryptoCove.Stark domain name and here you can see these buttons for Twitter and Discord. So I actually have to add my Twitter account to the StarkNet ID and then hit verify by confirming a transaction on chain. And then I have to do the same thing for Discord and then I can go back and complete this. Verify Discord, confirm that transaction. And now I have little check marks here. So these have been verified and I should be able to go back and collect my reward. All right, that's complete. So we can collect another NFT. Now these last two ones are just a couple of quizzes and I am not going to go through them here. I can put the answers to these quizzes down in the comments if you want, but since there's actually no transactions on StarkNet to collect these NFTs, I am not going to go through them here step by step. It's pretty simple, but if you have any questions about them, you can let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and good luck collecting your StarkNet airdrop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.